And for the past couple days, I've been seeing people very upset that when they go to a store and they're going to get some certain products, they are locked behind glass doors. Hey, so I'm at Walmart picking up a few hair supplies or whatever, right? See, we have, you know, the Caucasian section. Cute, 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 whatever. Then here we have our black cultured section. But wait, why? <laughs> wow, they think that we're thieves. Because why is there a lock? <laughs> a lock on every black item. This is crazy. Bro, this is crazy. They're locking up the toothpaste. What in the hell? And the body wash. That head and shoulders, that dove, and then we got our stuff locked up. <laughs> And I'm sitting here wondering to myself, have none of you people who are so mad seen any example of shoplifting going on at select stores to the point where these stores, whether they be gas stations, mom and pop shops, or the mega corporations decide, hmm, you know what would be a great idea? Locking up certain items because these are the items based on store inventory that keep getting stolen so we don't want to have to continuously lose these products. Let's put them behind a wall so that people know we don't really want you stealing this shit anymore and in your simple mind you will sit there and say well you shouldn't be doing that because insurance is supposed to cover all these things and my response to you is insurance doesn't cover anything and for like the 19th time can I come fucking rob you? But what if we looked at this scenario and said, we gotta start brainstorming. We gotta come up with some ideas because locking items behind glass doors is not apparently a good idea. So what if we came up with another idea? And honestly, this idea that I'm about to show you is absolutely asinine and stupid. For a few hours every day, this is what you'll find entering Fredrickson's Hardware and Paint in Cow Hollow. The table alerts customers to wait for assistance at the door, a move that's being attributed to, quote, rampant shoplifting. It's pretty bad. I mean, the uh, dollar amounts are pretty significant. And with the tools, and now we're getting snatch and grabs where they come in and take hold displays. So it's getting kind of dangerous for the employees and the customers. Store manager Sam Black says for two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening, an employee will work with an individual customer. The table serves as a way to keep potential thieves from moving freely in and out of the store. We just want to make it uncomfortable for the thieves so they go somewhere else. Black says over his 24 years of working at Fredrickson's, the theft is the worst it has ever been. Staff has had to drill down pots and pans to keep shoplifters from swiping them. They've also had to put in locking systems to keep people from pocketing tools and other household hardware. One customer telling Cron 4 off camera that the situation is just sad. Yeah, people aren't happy. The regulars just, um, they can't believe it. Like, we can't believe it, but, you know, they've been really understanding. Black says he and his staff had to try something because they had not much success getting help from city leaders or the police. At this point, the one-on-one -on -one shopping experiment has been going on for three weeks. Black says they'll review the results after a month. We just had to do something. Well, Fredrickson's is not really sure how long they're going to continue doing this one-on-one -on -one shopping experience. And we have reached out to Supervisor Catherine Stephanie, who oversees the Cow Hollow neighborhood, for a comment. And as of this uh, report, she has not responded. Bold strategy, but one question. How does this table stop me from coming into the store, kicking the table, and start taking everything off the shelves? What stops me from seeing the table, reading what you got there, and throwing the table at somebody behind the counter and saying, you know what, you're stupid. Let me take everything here because you're so stupid. And what pisses me off is that I'm not even mad at these people for trying. I'm mad at the amount of motherfuckers who were dumb enough to sit here and excuse all this shit to the point where early in the morning, 
morning, people got to do a team meeting and brainstorm on how the fuck they got to stop people from shoplifting because it is ass backwards that a team of people has to brainstorm a quick idea because a bunch of other people seemingly are okay with people stealing unless it happens to them. And I would want a stronger idea here. I'm not even mad at it. I'm just disappointed. I need a stronger idea to combat shoplifting. And everybody gonna hear me say that and say, oh, well, you smart motherfucker, you come up with an idea. Honestly, add more security. Build some fucking robots. Have motherfuckers be recorded and not do this weird fucking thing where you just let them leave with your shit. I know that there's all these hidden rules where you can steal a bunch of times, but after a certain time, you're gonna get caught and they're gonna show you every other time you stole. But honestly, come up with something that doesn't look like we're in a South Park episode because the continuous games of shoplifting and these shoplifters getting consequences for that and then apparently that's somehow infringing upon rights is stupid. Calls for justice today in San Francisco after a private security guard shot and killed a person suspected of shoplifting from a Walgreens drugstore. As KTV's Christian Kaftan tells us, those who gathered today are demanding action from Walgreens and the city. At one time, more than 100 activists were gathered here at the Walgreens on Market near Powell, honoring the memory of Banco Brown. This is the spot where Brown was shot dead. They were blocking access to the sidewalk and speaking out, demanding change from Walgreens and from the city. Now, that rally and remembrance started here at about 3 p.m. to honor Banco Brown. Police say Brown was shot dead here at Walgreens Thursday evening by an armed security guard. Those here say that guard shot Brown while attempting to stop a shoplifting incident. The San Francisco police later arrested that guard. He is now in custody facing a homicide charge. Friends say Brown was a trans man and was an active community organizer for the Young Women's Freedom Center. According to those here, Brown had struggled with housing instability for more than a decade. The group is calling on Mayor London Breed to do more to house trans youth. And today that organization is also calling on Walgreens to eliminate armed guards, saying nothing in that Walgreens was worth Brown's life. It's insane that Walgreens has armed security. There's nothing in that store worth a human life. Um, and Walgreens is not taking care of our community. We demand an end to um, armed security. The man accused of shooting Brown, Michael Earl Wayne Anthony, is in jail and could be formally charged with homicide as soon as Tuesday. My name is Leah McGeever. I live in D6. I hate a lot of people on this board for the reasons that led up to Banco Brown's death. So often I prepare something, maybe it's a little historical, you know, maybe a little poetic, whatever. There's a lot of performative people on this board who will say one thing in support of black people, homeless people, trans people, and then immediately stab you in the face, being racist, transphobic, anti-homeless. So I don't have any words prepared today. I just want you to feel our pain. I don't know if you can at this point based off your policy choices, but I have to pretend you have some form of empathy left. So I am going to spend the next minute screaming, because that is what is going on in here. That is what the trans genocide in this country, in this city, has brought me to. The countless amount of excuses people throw out in terms of wanting the shoplift is stupid. And once again, and I'll use this to wrap the video up, 
Can I come rob you? Because you're so confident and so bold in letting other people get robbed, you sit on your knees and cry like a bitch if I come rob you. It does not help making all of these excuses because you're hurting the bottom line of not just the mega corporations, but the mom and pop shops who are desperately trying to stay afloat because yes, in a time where people like to bitch on social media about supporting small businesses, money supports a small business. You could bring up the examples of people like Keith Lee, unless them people come in with their dollars that company is not staying afloat just because somebody said oh my god that's so good and just so that everybody is well aware it is important for you to understand that the more these mega corporations specifically have to deal with losing money, the more they're going to leave these low income communities you claim to care about so much on Twitter. And I know you don't want that to happen. So instead of saying insurance covers everything, how about you come up with an idea to get people to stop shoplifting as much? Because I know you feel bad that old lady Susan does not have a store conveniently two minutes away from her so where she could get her diabetic Pills. And for everyone else, you can subscribe to the channel and let me know your ideas on how to stop shoplifting. I will see you all in the next one. Mwah! Goodbye.